Good evening. Can you hear me okay? All right. We're going to be in uh, 1 Samuel chapter number 22 this evening, and also again in uh, Psalms, Psalm chapter number 27. Uh, yeah. So we'll start in 1 Samuel chapter 22. Uh, we're continuing our study here in the life of David. Uh, I started off by looking at some of the early early years of David. Uh, look at how he praised God for his glory. Uh, he talked about how the heavens declared the glory of God. And I, I know we couldn't see the uh, eclipse or anything like, like that last night, but it's kind of an amazing thing as we look and think of how big this universe is and that it's the handiwork of God's fingers. Uh, just an amazing thing. And so David, David said... Uh, O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And he talked about how even in the midst of the storms, how powerful God was. Uh, we looked at the exile as David tries to flee from Saul, or not tries, but he flees from Saul. And during the midst of that, he cries out, deliver me, defend me, deliver me, and save me. And uh, he said, at what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. And those are just, those, to me, those are some comforting promises. We, we sung standing on the promises tonight. And, and just thinking that God is the one who can comfort us, can deliver us, can save us, uh, and, and that uh, we can trust in him even when we're afraid. So last week we picked up with uh, some of David's family coming to him. They're there in the cave. And David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And then he talked about he, how he'd had this personal experience with God. And he's encouraging the people that are there with him, although they're suffering, he says, uh, uh, I sought the Lord, and he heard me. He said, I sought the Lord, and he delivered me. And he said, this wasn't just a small problem. He said, I thought I was going to die. There was no possible way I could get out. I couldn't do this in my own strength. By all accounts, I should have been dead, but God has delivered me. And then he said, no, I've got a word for you. He'll deliver you too. That, that's the message that he delivered. So uh, this morning we're going to look at, or this morning, Maybe it was this morning, now it's this evening. Uh, this, this evening we're going to look in uh, 1 Samuel chapter number 22, and we're moving away from the cave. If you're there with me, verse number 3. And David went thence, he went from the cave to Mitzpah of Moab. And he said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you, till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hold. And the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hold, depart and get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came into the forest of Harath. Uh, Lord, this evening I, I do pray that uh, you'll be with me. Uh, help me as I present your word, uh, that it will come forth, it will touch our hearts, it will bless us, it will strengthen us. And Lord, that uh, we can leave recognizing what a great God it is that David served and that you're the same God that we serve today. Uh, Lord, I just pray for peace and comfort in the midst of the, the trials and the, the troubles that we face and help us to be like David, recognizing what a great and mighty God that we serve. I uh, ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Now, uh, David's father and mother aren't mentioned a whole lot in Scripture. So if you go through, you don't find uh, uh, you know, chapters and chapters written about them. But here they'd come to David, probably with the 400 men that came, some of the wives came, and so David's father and David's mother came. And in this passage, he's seeking out their welfare. Now you think about this, King Saul is chasing him, wants to kill him. They're living in caves and in this rough, rough terrain, and they're probably a little bit older. You know, I don't know about you, but sometimes it's nice to sleep on a nice soft bed or a nice firm bed, whichever bed you have, uh, but sleeping in the cave... That's not really my kind of a thing. And so uh, David's parents are there with him, and, and he, wants to, he wants to help them. Uh, they're probably not in, in shape that they would be able to be constantly on the run uh, from place to place. They would be easy targets for Saul's wrath. You know how that works. If somebody wants to get it at a person, they'll, they'll pick at somebody that they love. And, and this we see uh, as, as a possibility here. So David finds shelter for them. And then under the direction of this prophet of Gad, or this uh, prophet uh, Gad, he, he says, uh, go, don't stay here. You, you need to move on to this wilderness of Hareth. Uh, look over in Psalms chapter number 27. 
Now, this particular psalm is kind of like the first ones we looked at. It doesn't say specifically that it's tied to this event, but there's some, some clues, some hints there that it, at least it would fit. Uh, so it's a possibility. And if you go looking it up, somebody will tell you, oh, no, that goes over here. And anyway, I, I'm not emphatic about it, but I'll point you to one verse. And, and we'll read this uh, entire psalm, but look down with me in verse number 10. And think about this. David's had to take his mother and father into Moab, and he's leaving them there, and he's departing on so that he can continue uh, doing what God would have him to do, but fleeing from King Saul. And verse number 10 of this Psalm 27, the scripture said, When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Now, I know we often think of this word forsake as a turning of a back, as a negative connotation, and the way we use it today, that's clearly the case. Uh, but... It, in this particular uh, usage, it can also just mean having to let something go, having to relinquish control. Uh, and David had to leave his parents there. They couldn't be with him. He couldn't stay with them. They had to have a parting of ways, uh, and it's, the word is forsaking. Uh, so he just had to leave them to God's protection. They had to leave him to God's protection, and now they're in Moab, and David's in this wilderness. So uh, with that, let's look at uh, Psalms 27. We'll begin reading in verse number 1. Here the scripture says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies, my foes come upon me to eat upon my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. For in the time of trouble, He shall hide me in His pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, leave me not. Neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord." Now, as we look at this psalm, we're going to divide it into just two basic sections. There's this section of praise, and then there's a section of a request. And uh, this first part is praise. David burst forth with confidence with his faith in God. And he talks about God, not in the term God, but in the term Lord. And we talked about this last week. He's using the personal name of God. This is the promise-making, promise-keeping, sin-hating, holy, self-existent, eternal creator of the universe. And he says, call unto me and I'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And David says, I call upon the Lord. And he says, the Lord is my light. Now think about this. David had been spending a lot of time in the caves. 400 people hiding from David, or from uh, King Saul, hiding with David. And uh, I told you I used to be a, a hack spelunker back in the day. And uh, You know, it's an amazing thing. When you start crawling out of that cave, the little, well, if you get all the way back into the deepest, darkest uh, 
depths of it where there's no sunlight, no light coming in at all. You can put your hand and touch your nose and you can't see it. But you can light a lighter, light a little tea. We, we used to carry those tea light candles, just a little tiny candle. You can light that candle and all of a sudden that darkness goes away. It, it's an amazing thing. Car, if you've been in there, we, we used to go for several hours. So come six, eight hours later, you come crawling out of this cave and you see that daylight. It's a beautiful sight. And David says, of the Lord, the Lord is my light. Now think about the darkness. Darkness is, is emblematic of distress, of trouble, of uh, perplexity of, of the soul, of sorrow of the heart. And you talk to people and they, they'll tell you, well, I, I just feel like a, a, it's just a darkness. It's just some cloud. It's just something uh, uh, coming over me. It's, it's just... It's darkness, but the opposite of that is the light. And the light that God brings, that the Lord brings, it's a light that causes the troubles to disappear. And David said of the Lord, he, now he's still facing troubles, he's got it all on all sides, but he says, the Lord is my light. The Lord is the answer to the darkness. He is the, he's the antidote to the darkness. And he says, as I look to the Lord, then I can be bright, then I can be happy. But the Lord's not just his light. He says, the Lord is my salvation. And we use that, that's a, that's a church word today, right? So you talk about salvation and everybody knows you're, you're a church person. But salvation has this thought of being delivered from danger. It has a thought of being set free or set at liberty. It has this thought of being uh, placed in a, uh, to be in a place of prosperity, a place of blessing, and then this saved from danger. And salvation's wrapped up in all of those. And here's what David says, the Lord is my light. He's the antidote to the darkness, to all of the trouble that I am facing, but he is so much more than that. He is my salvation. The Lord, the one who created everything, has come to save me, to deliver me. And I believe as Christians, you and I need to get a glimpse of who it is that we call Lord. See, we, we need to be following after and serving this Lord that David is talking about. There, there are so many false things that are going on in the world today. And, and if anyone ever tells you, you become a Christian and all your troubles go away, you, you just uh, somebody at work says, just punch them right in the throat. Uh, they're, they're lying to you. That, that is not the case in this Christian life. But in the midst of trouble, the Lord is our light. The Lord is our salvation. And then we can say what David said, whom shall I fear? If the Lord is your light, the Lord is your salvation, who's taken that away from you? There's nothing for us to fear. We have confidence. We can have faithfulness. We can go through this life, even in the midst of troubles, knowing who God is and what God is going to do. I, I don't know if you were afraid of the dark as a child or not, but uh, maybe some of you are afraid of, afraid of the dark now. Um, I, I remember as a youth pastor, uh, one young lady was uh, terrified of the dark, and she got married, she has kids, and she's still terrified of the dark. Uh, uh, but, but you just knew there was something in your closet, right? You just knew there was something under the bed, something, there, there was something there. And I don't know if you called for mom or you called for dad. I, I believe most people would call for dad because I don't want mom fighting no monsters. I, I want my dad. I want somebody big and tough and mean and scary, right? And you, you call your dad because you had a personal relationship with him. You had experience with him. You knew that he loved you. You knew he would protect you. And that's what David says about the Lord. The Lord is my light. He'll come in and drive all of that darkness away. The Lord is my salvation. He'll come in and save me from whatever is there. And the, uh, if the Lord is there, whom shall I be afraid? There's nothing for us to be afraid of. The Dow's down 270 points, and it's up 270 points. We don't have to be afraid of that. ISIL, we don't have to be afraid of that. Uh, Ebola or whatever the other viruses and all these things, 
We don't have to be afraid of those things. Put our trust and faith in the Lord. He's our light. He's our salvation. And we do not need to be afraid. Uh, what we need is a personal experience like David had. In verse number uh, 2, David said, When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. I believe David is thinking about when he stood against Goliath. You remember in 1 Samuel chapter 17, the Philistines said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a, a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, and the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. David had a really big problem. His name was Goliath. And he went out with just a sling and a handful of stones. And he took and put that stone in the sling, and he let her fly. And God took that stone and killed Goliath with it. David never forgot that. You know, you and I need to get to a place where we see that God has done something great and miraculous in our life, and we need to not get over it. Why aren't people excited about church? Because the people in church have gotten over what God has done for them. We need to get excited about this. I was facing a big problem. I could not pay for my sins. I could not be good enough. I could not do enough good things. There was no way for me to get to heaven. But the Lord sent his son to die on the cross in my place that I could have eternal life. You can't get over that. That's a big thing, and God has delivered. We need to, we need to get a view of this who God is and what God has done, and then we can be like David. He is my light. He is my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? Uh, the bigger the battle, the bigger the deliverance. Nobody in here is praying for bigger battles, right? If we had, if we had our choice, it would be a nice flat line from point A to point B, from where I am today to heaven. But God doesn't seem to let us live life that way because if it was that easy we'd start thinking we were doing it on our own. God puts things or allows things to come into our lives so that we can learn to trust in him, to develop a faith that is like David's. Uh, you, you think about this, David could have got to this place where he started thinking, I'm really doing pretty good. Saul can't catch me. Uh, I, I got away from the king of the Philistines. I got my parents safe now. I got 400 men with me. I'm doing pretty good. And then he gets lifted up in his pride, and he would fall. Instead, he says, it's the Lord. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? He's led me through big problems and delivered me from big problems before, and I'm going to trust him now. Uh, when, when you look at verse number 3, he said, the host should encamp against me. Uh, David had been surrounded many times by Saul. One, one time is uh, recorded in 1 Samuel 23. Verse 14, and David abode in the wilderness in strongholds and remained in the mountains in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him not into his hand. And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life. And David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a wood. And Saul went on this side of the mountain. David and his men went on that side of the mountain. And David made haste to get away for fear of Saul. For Saul and his men compassed David and his men round about to take them. All hope is lost. But there came a messenger unto Saul, saying, Haste thee, and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. Wherefore Saul returned from pursuing David and went against the Philistines. The enemies had, become, had come all around. There was no way out. David said, I can't, I can't escape. There's no delivering me. And God sends the Philistines to attack. And then a messenger comes and tells Saul, you better get back to, back to our land. Uh, we're being attacked. We need to fight there. And they were that close to taking David. No way out. And David says, the Lord has delivered me. Uh, and then David says, I have this one desire. I'm not seeking fame. I'm not seeking fortune. I'm not even seeking the destruction of my enemies. 
He said, here's the one desire, the one thing I want more than anything else is that I could live, that I could be in the presence of the Lord. What is your one desire? If you could have anything that you wanted, what would it be? David said, my one desire is this, to be continually in the presence of the Lord. He said that he would put me in his pavilion, that he would hide me in his sanctuary. He says, I want to be that close to the Lord. That is my one desire. Uh, and that is because every time David sought the Lord, the Lord delivered him. And even though the Lord ha has taken, uh, taken David and they've gone all of these things, David says, I want to be in the secret places of the tabernacle. Could you imagine it's like you, you go into, uh, go into the, the church and there's, there's the labyrinth of rooms and all the hallways. And the Lord says, come into this. This is the sanctuary. This is where I will protect you. And not only does he have the Lord as his life, the Lord as his salvation, he says, I'm not afraid. But then he says, I'm in his presence and he has put me in the safety of the sanctuary and I am continually in his presence. He says, that's my one desire. That's what I want more than anything else. And he can't do anything, but he says, I'm going to offer praise. I am going to sing unto the Lord. Uh, we, we were singing here this evening, and I thought uh, some, of, some of you probably believe that you've been asked to sing softly and tenderly on a hill far away. Right? Catch that. All right. Uh, but... But if we recognize who the Lord is, then we've got to be like David and say, I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. That's what the whole book of Psalms is about, is singing praises to God. God created this world that we live in. God has created us. God has loved us. God answers our prayer. God delivers us. He sends us the light. He sends us salvation. We have no reason to fear. We can be confident in this, that the Lord loves us, He's going to guide us, protect us. He'll hear and answer us when we pray. And David says, because of all of that, even if I'm living in the cave or if I've had to run away and now I'm living in the woods, I am going to sing praises unto the Lord. You know, it's easy to sing praises when everything's going good, isn't it? What if you've been chased out of your homeland? What if you've been living in a cave? What if now your, your parents have to stay in Moab and you had to move on and now you're hiding out in the woods? David says, I'm going to sing praises unto the Lord. What's his request? Uh, verse 7. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou said, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Now here's the thing. David looks like he's gone from this emotional high. Everything is great and everything is good. And now all of a sudden he's crying out to the Lord because something seems to be troubling him. Isn't that what our lives are like? Everything's going good. I'm going to sing praises unto the Lord. And then you get the phone call. Or you, you get some news at the church. Or you get some email or you get some... Uh, however people message you of what's going on in the world. You can go from being on a, on a high and being all euphoric and all joyous and just break your heart. That's what life is like. David's saying, I'm going to praise the Lord. And then the next he says, hear me when I cry. Have mercy upon me. Answer me. And David says the reason he's calling out for the Lord to do this he says, because when thou said it, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. If you want God to hear and answer your prayers, then you need to be seeking his face. We need to be seeking, what would God have me to do in this situation? What does God's word have to say about this? Uh, Pastor, do you have some counsel for me while I'm facing this situation or this decision? We need to be seeking the face of the Lord. And David cries out and he's pleading for the Lord uh, that the Lord will hear him. Many prayers aren't answered because we don't understand that answered prayers are often conditional. God makes us some promises that are unconditional. 
Some things he just says, this is what I'm going to do regardless of what you do. But there are other places where he says, if my people shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven. There's a condition in there. If you want God to heal this land, you need to humble yourself and pray and seek his face. Because then God says, when I see that contrite heart, that broken heart, then I'm going to answer you. Then I'll heal your land. See, we, we walk around and we think God just owes it to us. We sin and we don't repent. We, we, we sin and we're not broken hearted. But David says, when you said, seek my face, my heart says, Lord, thy face will I seek. He said, I am doing what you've commanded me to do. I'm rejoicing in the midst of my sorrows, and I'm crying out, God, I pray that you will hear me and have mercy on me. And, and again, we, 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 we can be like David. We can be just like him. David said, my father, my mother, they're in Moab. They can't be with me. I, but I can't help but think that David's father and mother spent a lot of time teaching him what it meant to seek and follow after the Lord. What, it, what an example David is. And I, I believe that his parents had a great hand in that. We need to be teaching our children and our grandchildren what it means to seek the face of the Lord, what it means to pray and get answers to our prayers. And we need to put our desire or put a desire that they'll see our desire is to be in the presence of the Lord. What good's it going to do if your kid has all the money and doesn't know the Lord? What good will it be if he has all kinds of nice toys and nice things, but he doesn't know the Lord? See, we need to make our one desire, it's not that we're wealthy, it's not necessarily that we're healthy. Our one desire needs to be that we will live in the continual presence of the Lord, that we will seek His face and we will know that He will hear us when we cry unto Him. He's our light. He's our salvation. We have nothing to fear. David says, lead me in a plain path. Uh, Don and I used to, to talk about this quite a bit, figuring out what would God have us to do. And uh, uh, we heard uh, one, one fellow was praying and he just told the Lord, Lord, write it in the sky. Make it, make it so I can't, I can't miss what your will is. We need to be people that want to know the will of the Lord. And we should be praying, Lord, make your will plain. Make it crystal clear. Lord, shut that door if that's not what you want me to do. Open this door if that's what you want me to do. And then I'll follow you. I'll trust you. This is what David had done. Uh, he said that uh, his enemies are all around him, lying in wait. He says, uh, deliver me from the will of my enemies. But he's saying, not my will, but thine be done. Whatever the Lord has for him, he says, I'll trust you. I'll do what you'd want me to do. And uh, there, are, there are many times when we look at David's life that we could say, well, he, he could faint, he could fall away. But every time he faced a trial or a trouble, his faith increased and that's because he made the choice I don't understand everything that's happening but I know this the Lord is my light the Lord is my salvation of whom shall I fear and he says I'm confident in the promises of God he's still not king it's kind of like Abraham and Sarah uh, how many years do you wait for the child David says, I've been anointed the king, but I'm still not the king. And yet he still says, uh, verse 13, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You know, he says, I don't think the Lord's going to make me king when I die. He said, it's not happened yet. It's been promised long ago. I still am not there, but I believe God is going to show me his goodness, his blessings while I'm still alive, I am going to trust him, I'm going to follow him, I'm going to pray to him, I'm going to seek him. And if it wasn't for my faith, David says, I would have fainted. And then in verse 14, wait on the Lord. 
be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Not an easy thing to do. But David said, this is, this is my heart's cry. I will wait upon the Lord. I expect to see his goodness. And see, David can say that because he's experienced the goodness of God. The Lord has delivered him. The Lord is presently delivering him. And he fully believes that the Lord will deliver him in the future. That's the promise we have. Paul made that in, in 1 Corinthians. He, he said uh, that, that I, I've been delivered, I'm being delivered, and I fully, I'm fully persuaded that he'll continue to deliver me. You and I are going to face a lot of trials. We're going to have some enemies. They're going to speak cruel world, words, but the greatest enemy that we'll ever face is sin. Sin seeks to destroy us, to destroy our lives, to destroy uh, the lives of those that we love. The Lord has come that we might have life, that we might have it more abundantly. He is our light. He is our salvation. He's defeated sin. And he says, if you'll call upon me, I will save you. This is the promise that we have of the Lord. Sin will lead you into darkness, but Christ is the light. Sin will lead you into distress, but Christ is joy. I don't know what kind of giants you're facing, but the Lord can cause any giant to stumble and fall. Does it seem like you're surrounded? The Lord can make a clear path. Where should you go to seek help? Come to His sanctuary. It's here that we'll show you from the Word of God how you can have the joy and the peace that David had, even in the midst of trial. Uh, uh, they're going to come. Trials and troubles are going to come. But the Lord will have mercy upon us, and he will answer our prayers. We need to be people that take him at his word and then be like David. Even when father and mother can't come to be with us, know this, that the Lord can, and he'll deliver us. Let's, uh, we'll, let's uh, be dismissed with a word of prayer. Lord, again this evening, I do want to thank you for the blessings that we have in your word. I uh, thank you for the promises that are contained here. And as we think about uh, the situations in David's life, I do pray that uh, we can see some similarities in our own. Uh, Lord, I pray that you put a desire in our hearts that we would be a people who would want to uh, seek after your presence and desire it above everything else. Lord, make the, the path plain that you would have us to go. Uh, lead us uh, across the path of someone that we could tell about Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. And then, uh, Lord, I, I just pray that you be with uh, the families of their church, uh, many with uh, uh, health issues, uh, many that are just uh, suffering a, a time of loss. Uh, I pray that the God of all comfort will come along and will lift them up, knowing that we're praying for them and that you care for them. We ask these things in Jesus' name.